Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Hello, live stream. Everyone. So today's workshop is going to be a true build session. So we're going to have a complete web app going from the bubble landing page to building something in Langflow and connecting with that. And then from there, building a chat page or some sort of page that displays results from Langflow. We will first build a bubble landing page. And this is a no-code app builder that I have talked about previously. It's quite easy to use uh, once we get started. And, and that's the goal today, actually. Just want to get you started. So once we have the landing page, then we're going to deploy the Langflow app or Flow, whatever you call it, uh, build bubble chat page, and then from there, connect to Langflow, and then complete that whole app building process. Awesome. So what I'm going to do right now is I am in the bubble screen. So I have some apps which needs upgrades, some which are already deployed. But what I'm going to do is I'll just create one right now. So we're going to go completely from scratch. And if we hit some roadblock, then it's totally fine. We'll try to fix it. But this is the usual process. When you try to create an app, then first thing you notice is there's an option to start from a template. If you have bought some templates before, or if, you know, use some of the free ones as well. But we're going to go from complete basic. So we'll call this live stream. Okay. So once I get started, then it'll ask me to start with some sort of free trial or no. We just want to start with basic features for now. Of course, if you want to get some of the advanced features, you can uh, upgrade to some of the different plans that they have available in Bubble. Now, once you have this, uh, it'll ask you for a few questions. Uh, what is the app name? You can change that if you like some of the fonts, if you want to change that. Um, or maybe if you want to change some of the colors of the app, um, it's totally fine for now. I think we can just you know keep everything default. Um, and then the, one of the things that we need to connect is with the API connector. Uh, this is something you can actually do right now, or you can actually do later as well. Not an issue. Uh, what, what I can do is just to make it easy for us, this API connector, the first one in the list, uh, most likely is the first one on your side as well. Just hit install, and that's the one that we need right now to connect with Langflow. And then we'll get started building. So we're given this blank canvas. What we want to do is we want to have a landing page where people can just go to that website and see what you're offering. And then the second page is going to be our chat page or page where we are going to have the, the Langflow app connected. So in here now, the, the good thing that Bubble did a few months back is you have something called components. And with components, you can pretty much just drag and drop and build things quickly and without having to, to wait. So now what I can do is I can just probably just bring this in here and then say, okay, you know, this is my first bubble app. Okay. And the way I'm doing this is once I dragged and drop one of these components, these are pre-built components, I have all of these things that I can click and make changes to. So this is like any canvas. If you have used Word document or so, right, then you can drag and drop pictures or text or so. Very similar, right? You're just dragging and dropping. Once you click on any of these, you'll see this appearance tab. And then here you can make changes and write. So if you change things here, it changes on the canvas. OK, that's the basics. So again, this one here, if I want to change something, I'll say just getting started. Great. So once I click off of that, or most likely you'll see it just refresh and it will bring the uh, the updated content here, right? Great. So this is our landing page just getting started, right? Now I can add a few additional things. Since you just got started, you know, you want to maybe have some more info about what you're building. We can perhaps say, what is our unique philosophy of achieving this? So I can just drag and drop somewhere down here. Now, what's happening is it's it's trying to somehow fit everything in one place. So I'll probably, there's always this back button that you can go back and fix things. The The way this canvas is set, there's some there are some layout settings over here. We're not going to go into details of, of everything, but, uh, you know, just some basics to get us started, right? This container is fixed, which means that wherever you drop things, it'll just be fixed over there. 
people who come from background who have built some some web apps, you know that there is this responsive way of building application where if the screen size changes, then you have you know things aligning properly, right? So what I'm going to do, same thing. I'll just say this is a a column type of setup here. So anything I draw below this is just going to be in a column fashion that goes right below that. And if, if there are any other issues, then we can fix that as well. Okay, so I'll go back again. Components, I'll just bring one of these and say, where is that? That particular right there. Awesome. So now we have the column available and anything we add below this, it will keep adding to the page. And this is the first page, okay? And there's a question, is this a web app or mobile app? So this is going to be a web app, which is responsive, which means you can also open on a, on a mobile phone and see if it works fine. It's not going to be a mobile app. Bubble is working on bringing a lot of mobile features. Hopefully in the next couple uh, months or so, then you'll probably be able to just build one and then use it across different platforms. Okay, so we've got the initial landing page introduction. Maybe I'll throw another component. Let's see if we got some sort of footer or so. This is our basic landing page, okay? Now we have three components on there. Then what we can do, this is the builder, this you know, canvas where we're building things, right? How do we see how it's going to look like when it's live, right? So there is this option to preview and just get a feel for that, right? So once I hit preview, this is how it's going to look like. Now, some things are messed up. We can fix that. It's okay. So we see that pretty much this, these two components are looking fine. I have got a wider screen, so things are centered. That's nice. Only one thing that's not centered is this one here, so we can fix that. Let's probably select this whole thing, the group hero. That is fine. Let's see if we switch to center. How does that look like? I can have one tab open for the preview. Now things look centered and it's it's fine to get started. And we have our landing page and this landing page right now, which has this particular link that you see on the screen, it is live. So whatever you built, you can just copy paste on a different browser. It's going to work. If you copy paste on your mobile phone browser, this will work. So that particular web page right now is live. Awesome. If this is the first time you built something, you got it working. This is amazing. Now you have your first web app working. So now this completes the first step that we had in here, which is build the landing page, right? Now, next thing what we want to do is we want to create a new page where we have a, a chat application or something that we want to do. What I thought is the easiest to start with is something where you send a prompt and get a response back from Langflow, right? So what we're going to do right now is we'll deploy a Langflow app. I hope you were able to deploy a version of it on a hosted server be it render, railway, any of those, it, it works fine. The way you can do it, if you have not done, is you go to the Langflow repo. If you go down in the deploy section, you'll notice there are a bunch of options, right? What I did is I clicked on the deploy on railway. It, it takes you to a few prompts. So let's see if we click what happens, right? So it takes you to the screen where it says, it has a database and then it has the application and wants you to deploy. Once you hit deploy, right away, it's going to take you to a version like this. So you'll see the screen where you have the database and the app running. And if you click on this link that they provide, it's going to take you to your app, actual deployed application. And this is the Langflow version that's working for me. If you were to use something like render, or any of the other platforms, it's going to be very similar. It's probably going to take you to their respective platforms and you'll have a deployed version. So we talked about this in the last couple of live streams. You have the blank canvas in here. You can start a new project. And that's what I did. Um, I started with a new project and I said, I want to go with the basic option of, of prompting, right? Or you can go with blog writer, either of the two. So I selected this here and it opened a template for me. These templates are pre-built and one could use OpenAI, 
one could use any of the available providers, Rock can get you started uh, easily. So in here, what's happening is we have some input and some output from this particular flow, right? So if we have a chat input, then it goes to the next step. We have a prompt block that takes the input from, from the user. And it says in here, answer as if you were a pirate. And it takes the user input and curly braces that opens up the connection that we can connect with the chat input. I just remove this block. And I said, I want to bring in Grok as discussed, right? So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to just connect as needed. So in here, we have the input that comes from the block before. So I'm going to attach that. The text from here goes to the text in the chat output. And now how do we get the API, right? So this is where you go to, if you already have an account, you can create an API. If not, you can create an account. Uh, from what I know, uh, there is no waiting list or anything that you have to, to wait for. So you can register and then create an account right away. In here, you create an API, give it some name. And then once you hit submit, what happens is you get a secret key. And if you have worked with any of the APIs before, you know that this is what you need to then copy paste in your Langflow application. So that's exactly, once you get the secret key first time, you just copy that and then you bring it over to your Langflow app and then you just paste it in here. Basically, I, I dropped the API keys here and then I selected the model. So in case, this case, I'm saying Llama 3, 8B version of it. Uh, the good thing is everything is being saved, so I don't have to save anything manually. And then once I hit playground, what's going to happen is it'll bring this screen where I can chat, right? Now, since in the template I said, you know, speak as if you're a pirate, I'm going to say hi. And OK, there we go. So we have the response back from our API. So it's in the pirate language. Awesome. And it's Grok, so it, it's quite fast. So that's really nice. So. What we have achieved right now is we have the landing page working. We have our Langflow app working right now. How do we connect those? So that's where we go back to our drawing board. And that's where we try to, to kind of you know build this whole structure. When a user gives an input in, in a bubble application, what we want to do is we want to save that input, send that input or whatever was the message from the, the user to Langflow, get it back as a response in a bubble. And the way it's going to work is going to send it to Langflow. Langflow processes it, sends the response back, and then we show it to the user in bubble. So in as a high level, this is how it's going to look like. This is our UI, and this is we're saving in bubble, both of these in bubble. This happens in Langflow, and then these two steps again back in bubble, OK? So any sort of API-based work that you're doing. If you're not using Bubble, if you're using something else, probably it's going to follow this similar pattern. So that's what we're going to do. So now we have a deployed Langflow app. Since we have that saved here, we're just going to call that in Bubble. Now, we had our first landing page, right? We want to go from here to somewhere where people can start chatting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page in here. So if you were to go on this where it says page index, Click on that. There's an option to create uh, a new page. And then I'm going to say, this is chat, perhaps. You know, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to clone it from anything else. So we'll just keep it as a completely new page. And we're not going to do any formatting for now. There's not, not enough time. Just want to show you the, the, the actual workings. Um, and then later on, of course, you can change the formatting. This is a blank page. We have index and then we have chat, right? Something we need to do to connect both of these is if you were to go back to index, we need some way of where users click a button, it takes them to the page, right? So we're not going to go the authentication route. That is also possible. You can have a page where you have, let's say, some sort of authentication. But for right now, I'm going to click on this button. I'll, I'll say, I'll just start the chat, OK? And with that, what I the goal is for me to take them to the, the the new page, right? We can do that for the other one as well. Same thing. Start the chat. And I'll just show you how things work. Now, if someone were to click right now, nothing's going to happen because 
it's just an element right now, right? So people click on it and I'll probably show you how that looks like. So let's refresh our preview. And then here, nothing's happening. Okay, if I'm clicking. The way it works in Bubble is you have workflows that you can specify that if certain things happen, then take an action or do something or call an API. And this is a complete different section right now in, in Bubble. So right below the, the design tab on the left side, you'll see it's called workflow. And if you click on that, it's blank, it's empty, because we did not start or we don't have any sort of events happening right now, right? So that's where we specify. So let's go to that tab. So design tab back again. Let's click on the button, which says start the chat, or maybe you probably had sign up or so. And then we go to the appearance tab. And in here we have add workflow. So I'm going to click add workflow. And then it gives me an option saying, if this button is clicked, then do something, right? We're just going to do one thing, which is we want to take people to our new page, the chat page. And the way we do it is if we click on this, the, the blank uh, area where it says click here to add an action, once we click on that, we have a few different things. And then as you build bubble-based apps, you'll see that you'll start using different uh, possibilities here. Um, if it were a sign up button, you could have probably created an account. And in here, you could have uh, got the person signed up, logged in, some additional things, update credentials, maybe send some confirmation email or so, right? So there are many options in here if you had the, the user authentication built in. For us, we did not do that. For us, we just wanted to navigate them to a page. And in here, I'm going to say navigate to a page. So there are also option to, to change things in the data, which is more like a database in Bubble. We'll cover that in a second. So it's one of the tabs on the left side. And then there are also options around email, payments, analytics. So all of these, you know, one could play around and, and see how these work. But again, just to keep it simple, we start with navigation. We take them to a page, okay? And once we click that, usually these pre-built windows or, or tabs, they, they open and then it gives you an option to do something. Since we said take them to a page, I'm going to select that. I'll say the destination here for me is the chat page, right? Because that's where I want to take them. Okay, so if... This is the base version. There are a couple of things. We can open a new tab, send some data. We're not going to worry about any of that. So let's just test this particular aspect. If we were to refresh our preview tab, and if we were to click on start the chat, it should take us to somewhere else. And I can see in my the URL that chat is showing right now. If I were to go back, this was not chat. It was just version test. Version test shows that it's the test version, right? So in the live, you're not going to see that. So that's working fine, right? So now we know we can take users from our navigation, the, the main landing page to the chat page. Great. So now we're going to go to the chat page and fix things here. So the goal for me is right now, take a user input, have a button where people, you know, they can say submit or so, and then it gets the, the response back, right? We can keep this, you know, the, uh, the initial prompt that we had with the uh, whatever response in pirate language, or we can also go to, I had another example here, which is a blog writer. This is also a template. So just maybe real quick, if we were to, yeah, just create a new project. And if you have this blog writer selected, you'll see there is a base template where you can take a few URLs, send it with some instructions, and then you get a blog written back, right? So let's start maybe actually with the basic, just, just the basic chat, and then we'll go from there if we need to convert into a blog writer. Okay, so this one is working. We know it has all the green check marks, great. Now, the way we connect this right, uh, this application, Langflow app, is using the API. So I'm going to select the second option at the bottom, which says API. So you just need to copy paste all of this info into your bubble app. So the way we can bring this info, by default, it doesn't give you any options here. What I want is I want the 
the chat input to come from bubble, not something default, right? So the default is what is shown up on the screen in Langflow. The way I can do that is we were to go to tweaks, chat input, and this has some base info that I had. I'm going to change that just even if you were to add a space here or anything basic, then what happens is if you go back to your run curl, you'll see you have an option which was added here, input value high, right? So just, yeah, if we were to go to tweak and add just anything, just a space or no space or question mark or whatever it may be, and if you go back, then you'll notice that this shows up, input value. This is going to be important because we want to change this from bubble. So once you have that, what I'm going to do is I'll copy this, as mentioned. I'll bring that over back to our bubble app. And here, we, when we first started, we added the API connector, right? So it's one of the tabs in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, if I were to go to plugin, and since we already installed, we'll see this API connector. And in here, I can add an API. I'll call this Langflow API. It does not require authentication for now. I'm going to import from curl. Okay, this is a small little you know, option at the bottom. So right below the first API call. If you were to expand, you might not see. So it's probably right here. Um, so we're going to utilize this option. Let's click that and paste whatever you were to copy from your Langflow and import. And what you'll notice is Bubble automatically does all of the work for you. It brings in the the URL, it brings in the type of header, it brings in all of these details. If you have not worked with APIs before, it's a usual way of communicating with any platform. You can send some data, you can get some info from it, you can delete updates. So there are many different operations you can do. This is the usual way of communicating between different apps or platforms. And, and you'll see this a lot if you have never used this before. The good thing, again, with Bubble, you know, if you have the curl command, you can bring in and then it does all of the work for you. Now, one thing I'll change to be able to use in our workflow, I'll change this from data to action. Okay, just one thing I'd like for, for you to change. And with this, now we can use it in our workflows. And then second is our input value right now. It says, hi, let's keep it as is. And what we want to do is I just want it to initialize so that we can save it, okay? So this is going to be required. So I'm going to hit this initialize call. What's going to happen is it will call your Langflow instance. Now, we see that the response is in a particular format. And uh, this is, again, for people who are new to, to APIs, you'll see in, in, in some format uh, along these lines where you have you know, a certain ID that comes back. There are probably some outputs. So for a Langflow, you'll see that there are inputs. Those were sent as message. There are some outputs that were provided to you. And the most important thing for us right now is the result. Okay, So this has the value that we want to bring it back to the user. Okay, so once we have this, we'll save it. There are a few lists that Bubble automatically does the formatting for us. So we need to remember that that the return value output was a list here. And within that, again, there is another outputs, which oh, actually first this output, which is a list. List is denoted by this particular bracket, the square bracket. Then we have another outputs here, which has another list opening. And within that, we have result and then result. So it's kind of a lot of nesting that's happening, but we just need to remember that so that we can use it in our, our application. OK, once we have this, now we know that the application, our bubble application, is talking to Langflow. In case if it was for some reason you got some error, I would suggest for you to bring in the curl command again and then try the whole steps again. Or maybe your Langflow instance, it, it was paused or stopped for any reason, so you can refresh that or restart that, and it will get that going. The only one thing that we need to change right now is anytime a user asks a question, we want to send that question instead of hi, right, every time. And the way Bubble does that is it says over here, use these greater than, lesser than signs 
so that you have a dynamic value that you can send to the user. So what I'm going to do is I'll just remove this high from, from our input value, introduce those signs, those are mentioned right here, and I'll call this again maybe input value, right? So that I know that this is the value I'm sending. And then once you click just out of this box, then you'll see that input value key is available for us. And this is the value we're going to send to our Langflow app from the user. And then I'll keep this not private, so I'm able to call this from the application. And just that, if we were to again say hi in here, I can reinitialize call. It should probably do the same thing, get the same response back, and that is nice. So all of that is working fine. The second step that we wanted to, to do right now, we got the chat page, we're connecting to Langflow. Now this is done. Now the last step is to complete the app building, which is showing the display on the chat application. So that's what we're going to do next. OK, so now we know the curl command. This will be safe for you, so you don't have to worry once you initialize the call. I'm going to go back to, to the design. Um, and here, this is our chat page, blank canvas, right? Um, just a few things, right? So on your left side, you'll see all of these are visual elements. We use components, which were pre-built for us. But if you were to go from basics, you can use these. So I want to say a user can bring in some value. So I'm I'm going in the, uh, so this input form section, and here there is input. Uh, I'll just drag and drop to the place where I want it to be, OK? And this shows as input A. Again, we can have some placeholder. There are a bunch of appearance, different layouts you can change. For now, we'll keep it simple, just one input. And then we want to add a button here. There is a button with individual elements. I'm going to call this submit, OK? And the goal for me is take the input when the user provides that, submit it. And then that shows the display of that as some sort of text element, right? So if we were to do our blog use case, then it'll be, OK, submit the blog title, and we generate the blog for you, right? And the way you can display that is you can actually have a, a visual element as a text box here. And this you can leave as is, edit me. So again, workflow, we take the value, send it to the API, get something back, right? Now, one thing that usually helps is if you were to take the, the user chat or whatever value it is, save it somewhere. And Bubble offers this data tab or database where you can save the message and then send it to Langflow and get some message back from Langflow, save it again, and then display it to the user. So we'll do that. Real quick, I think we'll, you know, there, we don't have much time. So what I'm going to do is if you go to the data tab, I'm going to create one, which is just message, OK? And this message, we want to capture both human and AI. So I'm going to hit Create. Once we do that, we have an option to create a new field. So by default, it, it links it to user, whoever was the user. It, by default, it has some dates available. So I'm going to start a new field here. I'm going to call this perhaps content, OK? This is the content of the message, so we'll keep so there are many different types in here. It could be a number, it could be text, it could be date, or it could be a file, right? So I'm just going to say, OK, this is just a text entry. And I'll create that. That's a content. And then I want to have another one, which is, I'll say, type. And in here, I want to say it's either a human or an AI, right? So I'll also call this maybe just a text and create it. So the reason why we're doing this, whenever we save it, we want to save the content and where it came from, OK? and what happens is, right now, if we were to go back to our canvas, then we'll see that if we click the Submit button and add workflow, we can add an option to save to the database. So going back again to the, the, the you know our, our diagram, we want to first thing save the user input to a database. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll go to the action and data. I'm creating a new thing. I'm creating a new message that I want to save. So this is create a new thing. And in here, I want to save a mess. Since we are just have one table, and that's it, it's showing us that data type, which is message, and that's it. So I'm going to click that. And then I'll say the content of that is the value that we got from the input, right? And the good thing is, in Bubble, you can see all of the elements that you have on the page. Since I already have one input as input A, 
I'll select that and I'll select the value of that, right? One could also select some of the properties like width, height or so, but in our case, we just need the value that a user provided. And once we click that, we'll see it's blue, it's happy. If you see something which is red, then it needs more info. So if I were to take this value out, then it'll probably be red. It'll ask you, you know, you need to fill some more info. So that's what we want. I want the input from the user saved to the database as content. And then I'm going to say the type of that is usually it, it either gives you option to click outside and just say human. If it doesn't do the easiest thing that I've seen is give it some arbitrary text. And in here I'm saying human. Okay. And I'll close that. So again, what I did is since it was not giving me an option to just type human outside, the easiest thing just to get away with that, you, you click, I'll go again. Okay. So like type, actually let's start again, type. And then here I'm saying human. Okay. Now, once we set this, we have already saved it to the database. Second thing I want to do is from there, call the Langflow application. This is the text we're taking from the user and sending it. Now, the way I can see that is if you go to plugin section, you'll see an option for the Langflow API that we set up and we initialize the curl call. So this is the one that we're going to send. And the good thing is since we had the dynamic option, the dynamic value, that's the only value that I have to provide to this API. And what I'm going to do is I'll take this high out, I'll add dynamic data so we can change it. It's not a static value, right? So if it were just some static text, we can't change it. So I'm going to add some dynamic text so I can take the user input. Again, it's the input A's value that I'm sending to the Langflow API and then once that happens, again, going back to the drawing board, we save the database to the database. We are sending to Langflow. We get some response back from Langflow, right? This is something Bubble makes it easy because we initialize the app. Then it should recognize that there is certain type of text that's going to come back. So what I want to do is uh, again, go back to data. I'm saving something to that table. So I'll create another new thing here. I'll say that this is a new message that came and the content of that is the result of this step, right? The step two, the step before. So it gives you option right now. It's a result of that. And if you remember, Langflow's response usually is in, in a certain format. So we saw that it's first outputs. It's a list. So what we want to do is we want to take the first item. This could be a little confusing. It requires a little bit of playing around, but then if you know if you remember it was a list so we're going to take the first item from it if it were a certain item number you can specify that here but usually it's going to be the first item in the list and then if you recall we had outputs within that list as well so i'm going to select that and that output was also a list so i'm going to select the first item and then we we recall that there was something called curl call that was the the info that we wanted to take from that particular call. And now this is happy, okay? Again, if you can't remember where it is, you can go back to plugins and you can go back. If you can click on this manually enter API response, you'll see that this is how the response was. It was outputs as a list, then outputs again as a list, and that we had results. But then again, this result is the, the, the curl call. So that's how it was shown to us in here, first items curl call. Okay. Again, if it is a bit confusing, I would suggest to, to, to go back and, and try this again. Now we have the callback from the application from the Langflow, right? And then what we do, we saved it into the database. We just want to display that value to the user. And that is the last thing that we have on our list. So let's do that. Now. We had this text box, right? We can actually just use this to show dynamically the value that we saved. And what I'm going to do is I'll click on the text box in the appearance tab. I'll take out any value that was in there. I'll say insert dynamic value. And I want to do a search for the message that is of interest for us. Okay. So I'm going to, there's an option which is to do a search for. And I'll select the message and I'll select the message that I'm looking for is the 
um, I'm, I'm trying to search which message is from the AI, right? So I can narrow that down. So I'm going to say the type of it equals, and I'll say arbitrary text as AI, okay? And then close it. So now I know the it's not human, it's AI. If Just to make sure that we have that properly done. So the first one, we saved it as human in the, the step one. Just make sure we did that in this. Oh, actually, we missed that. So the content we said is the response. Then I'm going to select the type of it while I'm saving arbitrary text as AI. So this is the step three again, folks. So in case, uh, since we missed it. So the first one, we said this is human. We can double check. Second one, we're making sure that this is AI. And then we save it. So it's going to be available in the database. And then we, once we search for messages, we're searching for that particular type, which is AI. And we only want to display the text, which is AI. You can sort it, you know, because usually it's something you want to show the latest message. So I'm going to say this is sending no. So this is showing the latest one. And I'll close this. OK. We might face some issue. Let's see. So and whenever we search for a message in Bubble, you it'll ask you this, right? It's the first item or item number. So we just want to search for the first item in that particular list and then display that item's certain value, right? So in, in, in our case, we saved it as the content that came back from as the text, right, from Langflow. So again, we search for a message which has AI in it. We can do in some sorting. We want to show the latest message. And the first item where it finds in the database we want to show its content. Okay. All right. That's a lot that happened. Let's let's see if it works or not. If not, we'll we'll try to debug. So we're right at the the hour mark. Hopefully this works for us. All right. So I'm gonna hit preview and I'm gonna see if this worked for us or not. So let's say hi. Submit. And you see the bar on top. Great. And then I see the response back. Awesome. So all of that worked fine. Uh it was able to make the call to the API, it sent the info to Langflow, Langflow sent something back, we saved it to the database and we're showing it to the user. And how to make sure that happened in the database, if I were to go to the table, if I were to go to the app data, this is the data that's being generated through the app, I can see that one of that was high and this was human, and the other one was from AI and which came back as a response. Great. So that is something that will get you started. This could have been a blog post, and then you can get your blog displayed here. This could have been any complex thing, right? Maybe drop in a YouTube URL, get a complete summarized version of the YouTube video or so. You can do that, whatever it is, right? If you can build the backend API in Langflow, the steps to show it on the bubble side are probably going to be very similar. So you, you can just bring in the curl command, get it working over here. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. I know this is quite fast. In an hour, it's hard to, to bring everything together. We can do a longer session if you like. We'll keep this workshop maybe an hour and a half or two hours or so. But the goal will be to get you started, right? So folks who were able to build the app, now you know how the whole thing works, right? The landing page, the chat page, then sending info to Langflow and setting up Langflow and then connecting API. Now, just on top of that, you can add authentication page. You can add payments to it. You can perhaps build some, maybe two or three different flows in, in Langflow. You can build a RAG app in the background. Everything starts from here. This is the foundation. And this is the part where most people have trouble. How do we you know, connect these things, right? If you're able to do this, you're up to a very good start. I also have a full course on Built By You Bootcamp where you know, I go in details of how you can build a complete SaaS app. So feel free to check that out as well. This is the base version of the app. Uh, if you would like this in more details, uh, let us know. Or if you would like to uh, for us to use some other technology like Flutterflow or Webflow, or so we can also do that. Um, the chat in, in Discord is active, uh, so feel free to use that. Thank you again for everyone who were live. I really appreciate 